There's a saying that goes, all contracts are agreements, but not all agreements are contracts. And there's some truth to that. If you're here, you've probably heard of a surrogacy agreement, and you may be wondering, what exactly is it? Well, stick around and you'll find out. And if you stay to the end, I have something special for you. Hello, I'm Corlandos Scott, and I'm a surrogacy attorney in Los Angeles. So basically, I've dedicated my legal career to helping people who refuse to give up their dream of having a baby by helping them grow their family through surrogacy. So let's talk about surrogacy agreements. First, we'll discuss what is a surrogacy agreement. Then we'll look at the purpose of surrogacy agreements. And finally, we'll talk about the enforceability of surrogacy agreements. Let's talk about it. For the most part, we use the word agreement and contract interchangeably in the legal world. You'll notice that many contracts refer to themselves as agreement. You know, it'll say, as stated herein in this agreement. But you'll notice that they use a capital A so that you know it's referring specifically to itself. But if we want to get technical, all agreements aren't contracts. A contract is a legally binding agreement between at least two parties with remedies available in case either party breaches the contract, AKA breaks the promise. An agreement, however, may be just that, something that two people agree upon, and it may or may not create legally binding obligations. I mean, we both probably agree that the sky is blue, so we're in agreement but there's no legally binding obligation that flows out of that. Okay, okay. I realize I'm being super nerdy and getting into the legal weeds with the terminology, but I had to make sure we at least recognize the difference. Now, for the most part, when people refer to a surrogacy agreement, they're talking about a surrogacy contract. So let's define a surrogacy agreement. Since there may be slight differences in form and requirements from state to state, I'll describe the characteristics of a valid California surrogacy agreement, but that'll still give you a good idea of where to at least start when looking at surrogacy agreements in other jurisdictions. So I'll break it down into five main parts for the valid agreement. First, there has to be an agreement, <laughs> agreed upon terms, between intended parents, intended parents, that's a technical term for someone who's growing their family through surrogacy. So, okay, the intended parents and their surrogate. Second, it has to outline all of the important and legally necessary topics regarding the rights, responsibilities, and plans of the parties. California code says some things must be included in the contract. So those are the things I'm talking about. Third, it has to be reduced to writing. It needs to be written down. It can't just be verbal. And that means that the understanding has been converted into a means by which other people can read it. You can't say I had a surrogacy agreement and somebody say, show me, and you have to say, I'll tell you. <laughs> you have to write it down. Fourth, it has to be signed by all parties. For sure, the intended parents and the surrogate and her partner or her spouse if she has one. All right, fifth, it's signed before a notary public. Now you do this in order to verify the identities of the signing parties. And this makes it admissible into evidence without further proof of its authenticity or said in plain non-lawyer English. It lets the courts know that it can trust the document and the signers are the real deal. Pretty much that's it. If that sounds like a lot, well, it sort of is. That's why it's imperative that you work with someone who can help you make sure that your surrogacy agreement is an actual valid contract that can be enforced. More on that later. Let's talk about the purpose of a surrogacy agreement. Well, this will be a short section, okay? The purpose of a surrogacy agreement is, drum roll please, to protect everyone involved in the process, and most importantly, just to make sure that the terms and the conditions of the surrogacy arrangement are clear, unambiguous, and they meet the state legal requirements. I know, as obvious as that is, I often have intended parents who are working with a family member or friend as their surrogate and they ask me, why do I need a contract? My sister is carrying the baby for me. We're good, we don't need all that. Well, actually you do. And not simply because it's a good idea, but because the law requires it. I mean, I don't know a state in the country that allows surrogacy, but doesn't require a valid contract between the surrogate and the parents. And there's a good reason why these lawmakers in these states insist on parties having a valid written contract. Let me tell you, 
Surrogacy is such a complex, intricate, and really personal process that it's really not smart to leave anything to chance. Every part of the process should be clearly spelled out and understood by both parties. Now, when my clients who are doing a family arrangement hit me with the old, we don't really need a contract, do we, line, I simply explain that the contract actually frees them up, and it does. When all of the minutia is defined and recorded and written down and I's are dotted and T's are crossed, there's no question marks around how the process is going to work. So really that frees you up not to worry about what will we do if this happens or what will we do if that happens, and it just allows you to enjoy the pregnancy and the birth and the prep together as a family. Now, before we talk about the enforceability of surrogacy contracts, do me a solid. If you're enjoying the channel, just please click the old thumbs up button. That way YouTube will share this video with more people and you'll be stacking up crazy karma points. Don't you want good karma? Yeah, I thought so. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of my new content. All right, let's discuss whether surrogacy agreements are enforceable. You'd think that if two consenting adults come to an agreement, and memorialize that agreement in writing that they would be able to enforce that agreement between each other, right? Wrong. Unfortunately, even though you and your surrogate may be on the same page with regards to the surrogacy agreement that you want to enter into, the state that you're living in or the state where your surrogate lives and may deliver, that state may be on a totally different page. Like, way different. Some states have flat out refused to enforce surrogacy contracts. <clears throat> uh, Arizona, <clears throat> Indiana. I mean, not to single them out because they're not alone, but they were the first ones that came to mind. And then you have states like Kentucky, which has no law that permits or prohibits surrogacy contracts. So in states like that, it may seem like it's okay, but you also run the risk of some of the horror stories that you may have heard of where the surrogate changes her mind during the pregnancy or after the birth and, and works to void the contract and there's no law on the books that says she can't do it or that she can do it. And the majority of states are really coming around to recognizing the rights of intended parents and surrogates to enter into these legally binding contracts with each other. So welcome to the club, Iowa and Washington and, and New York. But in a nutshell, the objective of drafting, negotiating, and mutually agreeing to the terms and conditions of a surrogacy agreement is to hopefully ensure that nothing in the surrogacy process comes back to haunt us during the journey. And if a negative event does rear its ugly little head, then the contract should be there to put it in its place because we've already addressed it in the contract. Now, if you're trying to wade through the process of figuring out a surrogacy agreement, don't do it alone. No, you have a friend. <laughs> Reach out to me. I love to help make sure everything is in order. And you can do that by just clicking the link below to start a chat with me. I can't wait to chat with you. Click the link.